afternoon, everyone. So my name's Abigail Jago. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Queen Victoria Hospital NHS Trust. So we are in a really critical part, actually, of our strategy development. And I think um, I think just as we touch on these conversations, it might just be helpful just to give colleagues a little bit of context to Queen Vic. I see some Sussex folk on the call that will know this already. But in essence, we are a specialist provider of services, a small organisation that has essentially grown organically over a number of years. So we've ended up with a bit of a muddled identity um, and numerous different um, opportunities around what would and wouldn't um, be the future direction of the, the organisation for a number of years. Um, as you say, Rich, I think the most important element of this as we approach our strategy is that, is that, that absolute part about strategy being around choices. Um, what, what we are as an organisation, but also what we're not. And I think what we are um, in practical terms doing is really, I guess, look at a very comprehensive overview of how we move forward as an organisation, first from a strategic perspective, but then that will obviously feed very much in terms of the operational delivery. So there is a complexity around Q Queen Vic in that we go across three ICBs. We have a you know, fairly material SPECCOM element we service two cancer alliances, we run services at multiple sites. Um, so it, it's a small organisation, but it, it's pretty complex. I think we've been really clear, I think, at the start of the process. So I think in order to be able to be in a position um, to be able to reach a, a state of being able to agree priorities, I think that point you raised, Rich, about really setting out the process at the start of the journey, practically has been very, very key for us in our strategy development journey. And it's interesting just looking at your poll in terms of the, the board alignment, which is absolutely something which has been critical to our piece of work, and but also the diversity of thought, not only across the organisation, but also across um, the system and, and more widely. So I think from our perspective, to, to really be able uh, in a position, we can say what would be the priority of the future for this organisation. We've been very clear at the start just around the scope of the work. So we've very much spelled out this is what our strategy development programme includes and this is what it doesn't include. So some really practical transactional things to begin with. So we are developing a clinical strategy. We're developing an organisational strategy. This includes nine enabling strategies. We've revised our vision, our values, and very, very supportive of the over uh, understatements, Rich, as you know, we're moving to that model. Um, but really being very, very clear around this will be our whole new way of operating and doing that in align with the continuous improvement methodology. At the start, I think we need to be really mindful of the temperature of our organisation. So our, our organisation, I would say, was was quite bruised from previous conversations and we just needed to be really, really clear, I guess, really around the, the state of how people feel within the organisation, but also really mindful of the, the context within which we operate. So uh, at the very start of our programme of work, we were really clear that to be able to make tough decisions, we need to make sure that we've got a process that we can all align to. So we had a very deliberate approach with our strategy that engagement would be fundamental to every step. Our very first point in our strategy development was to agree a set of engagement commitments and test these with our organisations and stakeholders and that we could absolutely make sure we could hold ourselves um, against those commitments as we walk through the, the strategy process. We knew that engagement was key, getting that really rich, intelligent perspectives. But data is also key to our work. And we, we've been really um, mindful that the data and the intelligence back from, from stakeholders across the board go hand in hand. And we very much engaged our clinical teams in what that kind of data set looks like. Uh, we have undertaken vast numbers of engagement in terms of workshops we've done surveys we've and obviously kaleidoscope has also been very helpful within that but really making sure that everyone understands what we're trying to do and the process by which we're trying to do it in terms of setting our i guess our first set of choices we were really um, again deliberate to make sure that we could um, we wanted to make sure that we were very clear to our organization that we were listening um, part of that, I think, is around the independence of what we hear. So we took the step of having our engagement feedback. So we had independent support to facilitate that. But we also had our feedback independently analysed by an independent research qualitative researcher. 
And that gave us real strength, I think, not only with our internal stakeholders, but also with our board. So our position on our board, we've got a, you know, a, a fairly new change of executives, but I think we've also got a real change of non-executive directors. And I think taking the board on the journey through the priorities, I would say has been absolutely fundamental. And just in practical terms, making sure we give um, and personally give a lot of time to individual um, discussions, forums, spending time with our with our board in its totality has been phenomenally important in, I guess, being able to move forward around the priorities. I think the engagement um, really, I think, gave us a real sense about what matters, what matters to people. And again, we're very deliberate in our engagement that we use people's own words. So when we held the workshops, we didn't summarise that people wrote things down on, on notes. And so when we reflected back that information, people could, could, I guess, could hear what they say. We've spent a lot of time synthesising that information, really just to get to a point of, um, I guess, what the priorities are across all of our stakeholders. And again, we're really deliberate in identifying who those stakeholders are and doing the, the stakeholder mapping, I guess, that, that, that we all do in these processes. I think for us, I would say a really good example of uh, of the choices was getting to a point of using the intelligence and the data that we collected was to build a really robust case for change because I think a case for change in itself really helps identify priorities and I think um I think it helps bring people to the same place in terms of we we believe these are the priorities of of the, our objectives these are the priorities of the areas that we need to solve and I think that case for change has given a really good platform around the areas that, that really matter. Um, I think there will always be that, um, I guess, that change within the political environment. And, and that I guess that's just part of working in the NHS. But we've been really, really clear from a policy, external and internal, internal perspective, um, what that case for change looks like. As we've moved forward, we were really clear, again, this would be relevant for some organisations, but not others. Because of our muddled identity, we needed to be really clear about who we are as an organisation. So our very first sort of point in our uh, sort of early in the strategy development was really considering that organisational um, uh, presence, I guess. So we considered a number of different options for us for, for a number of years. There's been uh, numerous conversations around whether we should focus as an elective hub, whether we should just be a specialist um, provider of care, whether we should provide services to the local population, lots of different elements that have always been, um, excuse me, I think mooted. Uh, so we had a, a really good, uh, I think, a proposal that went to the board via our board seminars to be really clear, this is what we are and this is what we're not as an organisation. So we landed that and then I think, again, that gave us the next platform to say, now we know what we are as an organisation, what does this mean for our services? We have followed the process that we agreed at, at the start. I think the crux of it is when you're looking at priorities and choices, there will always be differing opinions. So actually to get folk onto the same page of the process by which we reach them, uh, we have found phenomenally helpful. So as we move forward, we're in the process now of very much developing our clinical strategy. The engagement has continued, but being, really, I guess, really mindful that our evaluation criteria all very much reflect that case for change that we started off, um, that we agreed, I guess, at, at the very beginning of the process. Um, the, we will make sure as obviously we move this process forward, that we'll only define who we are as an organisation, our strategy, but then how that feeds into the year on year, I guess, operational delivery of the, the key strategic objectives.